dear viewer who's 27 episodes deep into a Pikmin 4 playthrough, do you also like Pikmin 3 Deluxe? If so, as of this episode and until it's complete, every weekend or two is a Pikmin 3 weekend. I'm replaying the campaign of Pikmin 3, as well as learning new Louie lore for my eventual follow-up video. They'll be announced in advance in my community tab, and all the VODs will live on my channel as well. I hope to see you there! What's up, Buttercups? This is a friendly reminder that this is my first and mostly blind playthrough of Pikmin 4. Please refrain from posting spoilers on upcoming areas, features, characters, or plot points that I haven't experienced yet. However, if you have any tips, tricks, or advice to share, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm more than happy to learn. With all that said, sit back, grab a snack, and let's get back to Pikmin 4. Thank you! What's up, Buttercups? My name is Scale Tree. And welcome back to my Let's Play of Pikmin 4! In the last episode, we almost completed Serene Shores. We have literally just one part left to get, the one that was behind that really big Emperor Bulblax. And then I'm going to do kind of a chill day in the rest of Serene Shores. I'm going to boost up my numbers so that hopefully I won't have to worry about that once I get to Hero's Hideaway. And ideally, once we are in fact in Hero's Hideaway, Everything is going to turn out just fine. Now, I realized something while I was taking my little break that I do between episodes. This is the same day as recording the last one. And it's that if I fought that giant emperor here... What's the word? If I fought the giant emperor here, in Serene Shores and not in the last area, then what's the final boss of this side mode going to be like? At least I'm assuming there's going to be a final boss. Is that not normally how these things work? Anyway, I'm going to wait for that bubble machine to- actually no, you know what, he came too close. I don't respect that. Obviously, I don't want you to tell me. I don't want to know, but what in the world is my upstairs neighbor doing? I'm so sorry if you can hear all of the banging that's going on up there. I did get a new one recently. He's moving in. I don't know what happened to the last guy. Uh, the leases here are a year long, and <laughs> um, I would have expected them to stay for longer, but I mean, I don't know. What can you do? I don't get to pick my neighbors. Anyway. While that's on the way, I did notice in the... What's it called? The preview pane for this area that I, apparently I did get all the flare licks. And looking at my total Pikmin count, that is in fact true. So it really was just that part that I needed. Mm, that doesn't feel very good, but... It's okay. It's okay because I want to make sure that I have plenty of each Pikmin type. And this will also give me the opportunity to get a bunch of raw materials. I'm probably going to be quiet for most of the rest of this day and turn this into the Q&A session I was talking about last time. <laughs> oh dear. So, uh, I accidentally drowned a red Pikmin because Go Here decided to cut through some stuff. It was really dumb. It was pretty- it was really, really dumb. <laughs> uh, Go here decided to try and skirt the edge of the water, and I didn't think to use the lineup trumpet. So, that's really silly. That's- <laughs> that is particularly egregious, in fact. What in the world? I mean, hopefully you guys will enjoy. And with that, we have unlocked Hero's Hideaway. At last, I've collected all the ship parts in this area. I'm only a few pieces away from a fully repaired SS Dolphin. I suppose tomorrow I'll explore a new area to locate the remaining parts. Okay. Very good. And with that, this place is basically cleared. 
and I am going to begin the montage. See you guys later! Hi, I'm Kip Kip and I don't do YouTube intros. I can show off cool fan art though. This one by Scarlet101 was originally shared in some stream for a silly game I'm not in. But needless to say, since it's depicting yours truly, it has my seal of approval. Even if I'm being called kind of stupid. What? Think I can't tell affection when I see it? But yeah, we're here for a Q&A, aren't we? <laughs> right. It's not like you all actually want to hear what I have to say, oh gods. I'll... Uh, try to get through them all. If the background footage ends up being slower than normal speed, that's hilarious, even though that kind of defeats the purpose of the Q&A montage. So, it's question time. Are you excited to be turned into a single plush, Kip Kip? It's in the works. You mean, like a stuffed toy? Why? This isn't me being self-deprecating, mind you. I'm just confused. And maybe a bit flattered? Hell yeah, I'd make a great plushie. Are you human? The fuck's a human? Forgive the silly question. Would you steal someone's identity for fun? You're forgiven. But if I answer this sincerely, the space FBI will knock on my door. So, sorry, no can do. Greetings, Kip Kip. So far you have appeared in-game, in live streams, and within the edited sections of videos. Are you planning on breaking into other mediums, such as written works? Actually, there's this literary work called a fan fiction, written by a certain cryptid slash eldritch entity I'm sure you're all aware of. Hijacking the plot is on my to-do list. Don't bother trying to warn her, though. She wouldn't believe you if you did. Hello, Kip Kip. Could I have a late happy birthday from you? No pressure to do so, but it would be nice. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. You look like a space pup and you smell like one too. <laughs> My apologies for the lateness, but seriously, congrats on completing another orbit around your sun. Hello, Kip Kip. How would you put each of the members of the Rescue Corps, including Palm if you know them, on the D&D alignment chart? Oh, hey, Palm was actually in training with me. Let's see, D&D alignments? I'm no nerd, but cultural osmosis is a thing, so here's my two pokos on the matter. On the good spectrum, Captain Shepard and Colin are lawful, Bernard and Palm are neutral, and Russ is chaotic. Yanni's sidled up with yours truly on the chaotic neutral square. <laughs> As the gods intended, of course. And Dingo? Well, I wouldn't call him evil in real life, but in D&D terms, I'd say he's neutral evil. Mainly because he's lazy and doesn't bother to help me with anything. Ugh. How is Yanni friends with that guy? Hey, Kip Kip, do you have any idea why Yanni's hair looks like a hat? Camouflage. Sexy, sexy camouflage. How comfortable is it to ride Ochi? It could be worse. I think space pups were bred to be easy to ride, and Ochi's no exception. That said, I think it would be simpler if he had a saddle. Bareback can be a bit bothersome. It hasn't happened yet, but sometimes I worry I'll slide right off. How do you feel about having to go back to PNF 404 to help Ochi plus any other castaways? Are you a little disappointed that you couldn't go home to your family? Or were you not really phased and just wanted to help out your doggo pal? I'm closer to the latter. There isn't much waiting for me back on Karoot. It's... complicated. I won't bore you with the details. As far as helping the castaways goes, I figure they have better things to do than rot away under the effects of forced sleep. Not to mention, a mission is a paycheck. But to be honest, Ochi is at the emotional core of my stay. I know space pups are bred to be affectionate, so maybe our bond isn't all that special, but... <sighs> it just feels wrong to give up on what might be the only other living thing to give a damn about me. Is that dumb? <sighs> Maybe. Whatever. I just noticed Kip Kip and my Pikmin 4 captain are almost the same, with hair color and eyes. Kip Kip, do you count this as impersonating? 
Well, you know what they say. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And I would finish the full quote, but I'm being threatened by a spray bottle, so I guess I'll leave it at that. If I made you a meal from any creature on this planet of your choice, which one would you choose? Hello, stranger I definitely don't know. You'd be willing to cook for me? How kind of you. If I had to choose just one, would you be interested in making something out of the smoky prog? I'd relish in tearing apart a plate of that. Vengeance is the best seasoning, wouldn't you agree? If you could have an infinite amount of Pikmin, but the more you had, the weaker their AI would get, how many would you have? Also, how big is the inside of the SS Shepherd? I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm pretty sure Pikmin are living things, not AI. And a hundred of them can already be rough to wrangle, so I'll say I'm fine as things are. As for the SS Shepherd, it's much bigger on the inside. Part of some technology Russ made? He could explain it better than me, but rest assured everyone has their own sleeping quarters, including the castaways. It's actually quite comfortable. Kip Kip, are you inside my walls? If I were, do you think I'd reveal that? Kip Kip, have you secretly been stealing Scale Tree's money so she can't get the Louis plush? <laughs> I have no need for her filthy currency. However, the powers that be have thresholds that must be met. Scale Tree is obsessed with this Louis character, so I'm sure she won't wait longer than she must. Also, something something honoring her word or whatever. Kip Kip, how big do you think the previous inhabitants of this planet were? Hmm, I'm not much of a theory crafter, but the size of Hero's hideaway alone leaves me feeling... off-put. I've never seen such a tall, artificial structure in my life. Maybe they were... ten times bigger? Twenty? Ugh, I suck at math, but that's my guess. Kip Kip, how can you break the barrier between game and life to talk to Scale Tree, or us, and do other activities? Well, <laughs> that would be telling, wouldn't it? Kip Kip, where were you on the night of insert suspicious thing here? I'm sure Yanni has records of me collecting glow sap that night. And even if he doesn't, you have no proof I did that. Kip Kip, who do you think lived here before? Actual giants? Freaky kaijus? Most sapient life tends to take on similar shapes as far as our intergalactic civilizations go, so my best guess is that they looked at least a little like us. But they must have been way bigger and form fits function, so maybe that's a stretch. Kip Kip, will you ever go to this planet called Hockitate? Oh, hell no! I have relatives there! I'd rather not be perceived. My thirst for lore will finally be quenched. Kip Kip, what has caused your love for Yanni? <sighs> I mean, what isn't there to like? Yanni's brilliant, handsome, playful, ethically dubious, probably well off from being a doctor. The list goes on, really. Hmm, but if you're asking about a specific moment, it wasn't long after I'd rescued him from the Kingdom of Beasts. I got pretty beat up at the end of that cave, and he helped tend to me once he awoke. While doing so, he thanked me and said, That must have been quite the sight, new blood. I can't wait to dissect what makes you tick. No one had ever eyed me with such intense interest before. Something about Yanni's sincere, eerie grin and chuckle really made me feel alive. Not to mention the literal medicine he administered to revitalize my pummeled body. I've been pursuing him and that feeling ever since. One day I'll catch him. One day. Okay, so the next few questions I'll have a common thread, which I'll resolve at the end. But first, the incidentals. Say, Kip Kip, have you considered that Yanni's gaze may lie with... Dingo? Or vice versa? Well, I'm sure they look at each other a lot. They are besties, after all. Well, that's the one thing I question Yanni's taste on. Kip Kip, are you on any no-fly lists? I'm not allowed on Sigure and will allegedly be detained if I'm caught flying in on a commercial rocket, if that's what you mean. What drew you to the rescue team in the first place? I'm sure training must have been rigorous. 
Don't mind only the last one being read out loud. These are all the same idea. Okay, this is a tough one. Have you ever had the feeling your whole existence is the butt of some cosmic joke? Like the only reason you were brought into being was out of a silly whim, and not a dedicated desire by those who gave you life. It leaves you feeling hollow. How do you fill that void in yourself? How do you establish your autonomy, a purpose, a sense of belonging in this vast, uncaring universe? I sure the hell don't have an answer, although I've tried many things. Some less kosher than others. But I'd always end up drifting, like a leaf on the wind. The Rescue Corps is my latest and longest attempt at resolving this matter, where I can put my physical grit and emotional resilience to work on something good for once. And maybe it's just my bond with Ochi talking, but so far, I'd say it's worth it. Ugh, who's cutting the onion in here? I think it's time to move on. Question. Have you ever played any game from the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise? Not necessarily a Sonic game per se, but I enjoyed Shadow the Hedgehog. I like that you can give him guns. Makes it a much more... enjoyable experience for me. What is your favorite type of cheese? Limburger. I know it smells like feet, but I'll die on this hill. You can pry this wretched cheese from my cold, dead hands. Which creature has been the toughest for you and your Pikmin to battle so far, Kip Kip? Ugh, how do I even pick? I think logically I should go with the Emperor Bulblacks from the Kingdom of Beasts, the Crusted Rump Up from Serene Shores, or the Groovy Longlegs from the Below Grade Discotheque. All of those fights had a few too many casualties. That said, the Smoky Prog knocked the wind out of me, and I take personal offense to that. <sighs> I really need to make sure I have those emergency kits on standby. Remind Scale Tree in the comments about them, won't you? Which Pikmin would you hang out with if it were human-sized? Glow Pikmin, of course. I feel I have the closest bond with them out of any of the Pikmin types. It also helps that they remind me of a certain someone. <laughs> would you rather have unlimited bacon but no more games, or games, unlimited games, and no games? Ah. Uh... I think I'll need clarification on the second half of that question. But anyway, I'll take the bacon. I don't talk about it much, but I have a pretty big appetite. Plus, I'm sure I can find... other ways to entertain myself. And that looks like the last question. Well, this whole thing just goes to show that I shouldn't underestimate how interesting I am. Thanks for the ego boost, everyone. I'll be sure to carry it with me moving forward. <laughs> No, but really, this was fun. More fun than I thought. Anyway, there's more scale tree stuff after this, so stick around if you want. All I know is I'll be at the SS Shepherd, waiting to get back to action. See you then. Oh, okay. I think that's the last of it. Today, we got how many spices? We have seven spicy sprays, five bomb rocks, a couple of shocks, a couple trachinators, a couple fail safes if Olimar gets knocked out. Oh god. Bye, Serene Shores. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Hopefully, I got a good amount of Pikmin, so that I don't need to worry about boosting numbers. <laughs> wow, what was that voice crack? Boosting numbers at all when I'm in Heroes Hideaway. If I'm going to, quote, waste a day, end quote, that I want to make sure that it helps speed things up later. Today, we got an automatic gear. We grew 157 Pikmin! And lost one. That was an accident by cutting through water. Lamau. <laughs> oh! And Moss learned Swallow. She can now swallow and transport objects for me. Okay. I'll get a chance to see how that functions. Before I get to use it with Ochi. So that's pretty cool. At long last, my goal of collecting all the missing SS Dolphin parts is within reach. 
According to the SS Dolphin's radar, the last pieces are inside some kind of giant structure. No. My life support system is reaching its limit. This is my last chance. Well, Olimar, I've got good news for you. We've got five entire days <laughs> to explore Hero's Hideaway! Oh, hell yeah. Seven ship parts, who knows how many onions, and I don't want to dawdle. I really don't. I, I mean, these days are going by so quickly that it kind of feels like the blink of an eye sometimes. But I, I just don't want to dilly-dally. I'm so curious to see what they've done with Hero's Hideaway for this, and to see what happens when all our Pikmin disappear. Let's go. Oh boy. Come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Ooh. God, the nostalgia. <sighs> Man. I cannot believe how beautiful this is. Good God. Something about this area is different from the others we've explored so far. And here they all go. Wait, where are you running off to? <laughs> ah! Oh my gosh. I'm so charmed. This is... I don't know if this is literally identical to what plays at the very beginning, but it's close. It fills me with a lot of joy. That can't be a good sign. The Pikmin don't usually scurry off like that. I suppose I'll have to call them back while I search for the missing ship parts. That's right, Moss. You got that good. All right. Were there any back here? I don't think so. I know that our first that the first batch I remember getting were through here. Come on, buddies. Nice hiding spot. Nobody behind there. One gun rush could break those. I knew I'd find you here. Oh my god, the fact that he still has, like, tutorial dialogue. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, you little bastards. <laughs> Feel that gust of wind. I knew it. I knew there were some of you hiding around here. Come on. We've got a couple of you, and let's head on down. There's the Porquillion that served as our first kind of introduction to bosses in the game. <laughs> we got a little trail of Pikmin breadcrumbs here. I wonder what's behind this. It's more of your friends, Olimar! More of your little guys! Alright. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Let's get them down with a rush. Do I need a rush? Well, okay. I got one down. <laughs> we'll gladly take that. I did see more over there, but... Right now, I'm just gonna... Aggressively go through. Wait a minute! <gasps> Guys, I just realized there's no daytime dial in the corner. Is this legit? <laughs> just playing through the tutorial all over again? But now we kind of know what we're doing? Oh, that's so fun. I realize, while I'm going through here, I don't believe I've asked a question of the day yet. While I'm platforming with Moss... 
I want to know. Do you have a favorite platformer style game? If so, what is it? I've always been pretty partial to Spyro titles myself. But, you know, I mean, I can't pretend like I won't enjoy some good Mario or 2D Sonic or other such series once in a while. Where on earth are you? Oh. <laughs> well, there you are. I know that killing the Porquillion advances the story. So I'm avoiding that for the time being. Did that grass just move? Why, yes, it's more of your little buddies. And I think the rest are up here. This way. Another fun question for the comments section. How do you guys feel about a Pikmin game having an entirely indoorsy area like this? Like an overworld one, not just a cave like Glutton's Kitchen and Pikmin 2. I admit it took a little bit of mental getting used to for me personally, but I actually think it's pretty neat, considering that Pikmin is meant to take place on an Earth that has no humans anymore, or at least none that are, like, you know, actively alive and doing their thing. What a relief! I found all my Pikmin. Now I just need to find my missing parts. Well, I know where to get started with that, Olimar. It took a bit of getting used to for this area, but I find that I really like it. I mean, it's very clean. It's cleaner than what I would have expected in, like, you know, a previous Pikmin title. But I'm not necessarily complaining. It's cool to see these little characters explore man-made environments. Whoa, is that thing eating a ship part? Not quite. But it is gonna die pretty quick. <laughs> wow. Now that's the kind of confidence I wish I could exert in everyday life. It's the interstellar radio. We located it at last. With this back in my possession, I can finally call for help. Oh? Oh, it's a Gildamander! Hi! Huh? When did that creature show up? Could it be the reason why the Pikmin and the Onion are acting so weird? I would say probably. The Pikmin are unable to transport this. What's that creature doing to them? Hmm. Well, I guess I know what that means. Time for a small boss fight. And I remember what to do from last time. We grab all of our buddies, and we break the gold first. Before it can eat us, anyway. Hello, mister. I know, you're very interested. Come on. Make like you're about to lick. We have to, like, bait and switch this thing. Whoop. You know, I wonder if fighting this thing would be easier if I split the team. Moss? Oh, well, okay, you know what? Shit! <laughs> Let's just go for it. Go, 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 go. Get all of the stuff off his back. Annihilate, nuke, destroy. Am I being reckless? Yes. But it's all right. <laughs> I need to fight with yellows. I'm sorry, reds. I need to fight with reds. I need to fight with reds. I need to destroy all these little bits. This isn't going terribly, but I wish I could break this gold. It's. Is it just me or is it going like pretty fast? 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, okay, okay. More blue. Uh, shit! I'm trying to get to my red Pikmin. Uh. Phew. Wow. You know? I'm very pleasantly surprised by the fact that I killed it without losing anybody, I think. Oof, that could have gone a lot messier. Thank goodness, the Pikmin and Onions seem to be back to normal. Now it's time to transport that precious interstellar radio. Okay. Ah, and it immediately sets it to halfway through the day. Just gonna break these so that they aren't in our way. Okay. Now, is there a base over here? There is not. Come on. Buddies? I know that the nectar is tempting, but literally, like, all of you are flowered, so... <laughs> Let's get this thing back. And now that we have our actual daytime dial on again... I'd say this is as good a time as any to start getting other stuff. So I guess I need to head this way to head up here and then move that down. Okay, yeah, I think I know what I'm doing. Kinda. Moss, if you could go a little faster. Why are you... <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> sure. Let's take the longest shortcut ever. Why not? <laughs> oh. It's not going up and down. Do I need to jump on this then? Wait a minute. Is this fire? I can't talk. Is this the final trial? Playing kind of on top of the hero's hideaway theme? Because if so, that's freaking brilliant. Okay, yeah, while I'm up here, I need to get this as well. Wait, why are the Pikmin transporting it this way? What? Does this make any sense to anybody else? Shouldn't they be going to the, the base? I mean, I, let's make it easy for them, I guess. Feasting center, please. Or are you following me? Uh... Cool? Guys, I'm so confused. <laughs> what the hell was that? Now I can send the distress signal. And we will at the end of this day. I'm sure of it. And I guess that's proof that Moss is, in fact, bigger than Ochi, because I'm pretty sure Ochi can fit through that. Let's get on here. And see what's down this way. Ah. One of these little watermelon fellas. Is there a way to flip this thing over? Is there a way to get Moss up here? Or do I just need to distract it while my Pikmin grab the part? I'm gonna go the distraction method for now. Uh, if there's a way to flip it over without a dog, let me know. Okay, at least it's not carrying a part. And I can go ahead and call my idle Pikmin back to me. 29 idle Pikmin. Come on, fellas. Don't be silly. I need all of you. There's... Wait. Where the frick? Okay. Yeah, I, I really don't like that. Moss... 
break this, please. Thank you. And I'm gonna disband completely, I think. If my homesick signal doesn't work. Oh, no. Pack. Homesick signal. Please stay here. Oh, they are coming back. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. I was gonna get really worried. I wasn't sure why they weren't coming when I used the idler's alert. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> well, that was super chaotic. Do you guys know why they didn't go to the base at the stargazer's spot, I think? What was it? The base way up there. I'm very confused by this. <laughs> but anyway. I'd say today was pretty productive. Two parts is nothing to sneeze at. That's pretty much on pace. Phew. All right. Very good. Bum, 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 bum. Sorry if my thoughts for today were a little bit clustery. I'm, uh... <laughs> I'm just really impressed and awed and trying to take everything in. And it was kind of a lot, but... It was a cool a lot, you know? Two bosses back to back. The weirdness with the onion. At least today we lost zero Pikmin. And we've got four days left to get, I think, three parts, so yeah, all in all, not bad, and we kind of know where one of the pieces are, and having an ice blast might help. Oh, oh. This is Captain Olimar. I'm currently stranded on an unknown planet in the far reaches of space. Oh, yeah. Please send help, as fast as you can. News oh. I can only hope this distress signal reaches the rescue corps. Well, uh, better late than never, Captain. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Oh. No, no. Yes, we've got five parts left. Four days to get them. I'm sure we can handle it. Oh, this is getting this is getting a little bit intense, but in a good way. Like, I'm antsy and I want to keep recording more right this second, but I think now is as good a spot as any to end the episode. So Next time in my Let's Play of Pikmin 4, we're going to come back to Hero's Hideaway and see what we can get done in the time that we have there and see if the area continues to be uh, just a little bit strange, just a little bit off, or if things kind of simmer down after this first really odd day. Anyway, in the meantime, I hope you guys have a lovely day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>